Ooh, I had so many jokes. <laughs> All I have is gratitude. Now, it is true. I feel that I belong here. Okay, I'm going to pray because I'm not going to get this together if I don't. <laughs> Father, I thank you so very much for this space. Not just the building, but the space with these people for eight years to grow and to groan and to be lifted up and to lift them up to be built up you are masterful at this and I am full of gratitude all right so hopefully this is good for you <laughs> um, I, I'd like to start by putting the scripture up first because it provides some framework for me, um, because I am literally the person that will not look at any of the notes that I wrote. <laughs> that I ached over, that I pined over, that I prayed over. I literally will not look at, I know they're there, but the scripture's going to keep bringing me back to where I think that um, it was laid on my heart to share with you this, this morning. So Romans 12, 17 through... 21. Uh, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I'm supposed to say something after that. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> That is fantastic. <laughs> okay, so I too relate with Charlene and Mark as they shared openly uh, of their desire to put something together that is well done. But more so, I want you to like me. <laughs> so I agonize over putting it all together. I also know that um, in the room and also in Zoom space, um, Zoom space, YouTube space, that there are everyone from GED to PhD. And I long to relate to you all. I actually have been known to flaunt my PhD from time to time. <laughs> Profoundly hungry and driven. <laughs> but my most present obstacle and what brings me to the most anxiety is diving into the Word of God collectively and individually, considering my position in creation and that I am ever transitioning <coughs> into the final product that I was created to be. That's a hard thing to do. Seeing yourself in the scripture and wrestling with the text, wrestling with yourself the way that you know you. Martin Luther King read, uh, writes, the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opponents into friends. It is this type of understanding, goodwill, that will transform the deep gloom of the old age into the exuberant gladness of the new age. It is this love which will bring about miracles in the hearts of humankind. That's a little DJ in my head when you hear that. Just ignore it. It's the Brooklyn coming back. But today, 
I am asking that you leave your pedigree at the door and prepare yourself for us to collectively meet Jesus in this place. I'm asking that you leave whether you lean to the left or to the right politically aside for a moment to collectively meet Jesus in this space. I am asking for a moment today that you leave whatever box that you have created and or that you feel has been created for you aside for a little while and get uncomfortable at the feet of Jesus. Uh, trust me, your stuff will be at the door when you, when you leave. You can pick it up on your way out. So today as we close out this series, we will continue to look at Paul's writings to the church in Rome together and say, see how we might apply his encouragement to our lives wherever we may be. And just to stitch together the past few weeks, we have heard Dave Carranza sharing about the beauty of the mosaic of the beloved community, how these diverse pieces of life come together here to make up the beautiful imagery of Christ, which is the beloved community. Where this mysterious mass shows up, one plus one equals one. We as one have been called to be one, to be a part of one. How wonderful is it to be aware that we are a piece of God's masterfully pieced together masterpiece? Aren't you glad about that? That's something to celebrate. Okay, so let me be honest with you. If you don't speak back to me, this is going to go a whole lot longer than you want to do. <laughs> Pastor Mark Stryker shared with us the importance of de uh, depositing yourself and talent and time and attention to the beloved community, and not simply as doers, but because God sees you and knows you. You are not forgotten in the beloved community. Your talents work toward the building up of the body. Simply don't think highly of yourself. You are not the only pebble on the beach. <laughs> Pastor Charlene walked us through the community standards, how to operate and conduct this, yourself as a follower of Christ. She shared from Paul's writing that, yes, there is a way to be that can and will be seen and felt ultimately in and through our love. Like Paul, that's a comma. Every time I, that you hear that, that's a comma on my page. <laughs> it's fantastic. Pastor Charlene explored, uh, like Paul, Pastor Charlene explored some examples of this love by directing us via 1951 gift card to get to know each other by intentional appointment, to get to know each other better, to lean in a little bit more. She also shared the range of an unreasonable love where strangers called neighbors would come together for moments to celebrate together the work of first responders during COVID from their individual pods, but their praise meeting collectively in the streets and bathing the environment with love and the unequally unreasonable acts of the daughter of Eric Garner showing up to the services of fallen police officers to share that she stands with them and even more understands. Love with this unreasonable love for it, for it is how you have been and continue to be loved. That is the wrong page. But it seems to me that the writings of Paul are a trajectory, or a Christian journey, a tra trajectory of a Christian on the Christian journey. Who you were, who you are, and who you are becoming. If you look at Romans 12, 1 through 2, there's a portion of it that reads, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to hold on that for a moment. Because this is where the work is, right? This is after you recognize who you are and where you've come from, now you're deposited into this, this beloved community and you've got to wrestle with the way that you thought and the way that you're being encouraged to believe and to live and to love, because this love is a different love. There's no reason why Eric Garner's daughter on an earthly level should go to someone who she feels or has represented in her life an opposition, a challenge, an obstacle of life and how it should be. Her justice should be enacting justice on, on behalf of her father. A life for a life. 
Why should she, why would she? It's unreasonable. This is the love that we've been called to in the beloved community. And it's not simply for yourselves. It's not simply for ourselves. The work of Jesus Christ in the earth is worked out through you. Thank you. No, you got to really get that. See, because we can think that this is a club. And once you're in, you're good. You're safe, right? You're safe under the cross. You're safe under the blood. And you don't have to change. You don't have to do anything else. But the reason why we are here and why you come every Sunday, you've been here for some of you 80 years. (laughs) And if you haven't gotten it, there's no hope for any of us. But, the, but the, the opportunity in the earth is that we really don't get it. We have our flesh to live with. And with that flesh, we can't get to the places where we understand where God has designed this whole operation to work. And how it works is you're here. You become the reflection of Jesus Christ. You are the work in the earth of Jesus Christ. How is anyone else going to see Jesus unless they see it through you? Hmm. The scripture says, do not repay evil, anyone evil for evil. We can get that, right? We can get that. But if someone takes your son... Or if someone does something so heinous, you might in your flesh want to get revenge. And I get that. But what the community is asking, what Jesus is asking and mandating, the mantle on our shoulders is different. It's a love beyond that. It's to understand that the whole world is his cause, not just those in here. So as you experience the love that I experience here at First Press, the words that that would bring me to tears, if I didn't live that out in the earth for someone else to see it, then we are a club. We're a small club just edifying each other. And we've been called to more than that. We've been called to love beyond the reasonable experience, beyond what is natural. And that's what Paul is talking about. Paul is talking and encouraging this church to consider more. Paul's letter to to this early church is counterculture. It's counterhumanity. And in the words of my two-year-old, it ain't fair. It just ain't fair. How do you expect this to be? But this love is so good. And it's so honest. And it's beyond the hallmark. It's when Charlene began to say that, and when you stood up, and you didn't have to, but when you did that, it moved in me in ways that you can never imagine. I will never be able to communicate and or volley back to you that what I felt. But I will tell you that it's not. I don't feel that it's surface. I feel that you actually feel what you say you feel the way that you say that you feel it. And for me, what it does for me, it changes me. It changes the way that I do things. So imagine if you did that to outside the building. Imagine, imagine if you went to where you went to college or where do you go to college and you love that way in your college dorm and you love that way at your job, Adobe, I'm, I'm dropping names, okay, wherever. <laughs> wherever but if you wherever you work and you drop you drop that kind of love in that space it doesn't make sense in the space and it's not supposed to it's supposed to change the space so if there is some evil around you when you want to get revenge you know that person cuts you off in traffic when you're looking for a little payback You know, you don't get that role that you want or that position that you want. 
If you can't see your way through, if an attack comes, what if you lose everything? What if the mountains are too high and my abil- and your ability to traverse the mountains, you're lacking? What if you still struggle or we still struggle with race and gender and sex and, and all the things? We're still called to that same place. It doesn't change. And how we can see it is because we have, uh, like Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, we, we're in the transformation process. And what I said, the hardest thing to do is to share it knowing my position in the earth. Because I know that I'm still in the transition too. And we all are. How do we do it? How do we overcome all of this? We do it together. See, Paul's not writing to an individual. He's writing to the church, the body. So the body, together, we hold on to each other. We can do this. We can be better in here to be better out there. You know, kind of like where the third floor staff meets the back row of the pews, where the balcony meets the furthest person watching online, and where the children and youth reach into all of our lives with the wonder of living to help build each other up in order to remain the example of love revealed. Um, My son was about five years old. My oldest son, because that would be weird if he's two. How did he get to five and go back to two, right? So... My oldest son was five years old, and we were walking to go get pizza um, from where we lived, and we lived in Fremont. And on my way to get pizza, um, I was holding his hand. And on the way, he stopped, let my hand go. And I was like, what's what's going on? What's going on? And he was like, well, I don't want to go any further. There are mountains in the way. And I was like, what? (laughs) Buddy, this is a sidewalk. There's no mountains in the way. Let's go get this pizza and get back. I don't got time for this. Held his hand again, and we started walking some more, and he pulled his hand out of my hand again. And he refused to walk. I said, Israel, what's going on? He's like, there are mountains. I said, there are no mountains. And I got down on my knee, and I shared his experience, kind of like what Charlene was saying, weep with those, mourn with those. You have to experience so I bent down and I experienced what he was seeing. And what he saw was the sidewalk. He saw the sidewalk going like this. The roots were pushing up the concrete. And all he could say was, I see mountains. And I said, I get it. I understand. But if you hold my hand, we will get through this. There's something good on the other side. We'll get it and then we'll come back. And in the moment, I heard, just hold my hand. So today, I would share with you, we need to get real good at holding each other's hands because our experiences are different. Some of us see mountains, but there are no mountains for the other person. And when you hold your hand, we can get through the mountainous spaces. And we can enjoy the pizza on the other side. So how do we overcome? We overcome together, mauled, marred, motley, and magnificent. How do we overcome? Wonderful, weary, worrying, wandering. We overcome together because we're holding on to his hand too. Newton's first law of motion, an object in motion will stay in motion unless it is acted on by another force. My prayer is that may the church be the unique force of love to an already moving creation which provokes in God's time and God's way movement toward the cross. May it be so.